Small farts. Small farts, small farts. Small farts, small farts. Small farts, small farts, small farts. And welcome to Devil May Cry 3. I'd like to welcome you as be your host again, the Super Blue Badger. And we are going again to, uh... Well, what happened last episode? What did happen last episode, Blue Badger? Only you can tell us. Well, I'll tell you now that in the last episode we picked up the Neo, well, Haywire Neo Generator, which in return for our soul it gives us infinite power! Infinite power for the Demon Souls, the Devil Trigger, giving us the ability to uh, be a Devil Trigger for all eternity. He who holds this broken device is irradiated and their soul is exchanged for unlimited power. Yes, so for the entire duration that we're holding this, our life goes down, but our Devil Trigger is infinite. Our powers are unlimited. It's beautiful. We cannot be stopped. We run like a child on Pixie Wee! Pixie Sticks. Fucking Pixie Sticks, man. And so we just have to go through another phase of this. The monsters have been upgraded to the uh, Gluttony Monsters and Sloths, I believe. So it's just a slight upgrade, nothing too fancy. Just wail on them and you might think that my head health is going down pretty fast, but fortunately these all these monsters drop health items. It's beautiful, easy enough. I've really got to take a lesson on uh, repeating myself actually, because I seem to do it a lot. And I hate anyone that repeats things to me. So yeah, that's actually a good thing to talk about. So who hates people that repeat things constantly? Fucking constantly. So I remember back in the days when I was living in my old house that so this person knocked on the door after I, and well, this woman knocked on the door and came to complain about me because somebody had pissed on the toilet seat and she automatically assumed it was me. Badgers have proper, to proper toilet hygiene, thank you. But what she did was she came to talk to me about it, left a note pinned to my door and also left a second note re reaffirming the fact when I got back from work. Who fucking hates this? I really fucking hate this a lot. But not, and I've always threatened, if you pin a note to my fucking door, I'm gonna pin an entire turkey with a butcher's knife to your door. Fuck you, I don't care if you're the president of America. I'm gonna pin a turkey to your door. Take that over, office. But seriously, I mean, who gets frustrated by that? Because I certainly fucking do. Maybe I should just go back to living in a hole like other badgers. We don't have doors. But then I'd, they'd probably just pin it to the roof instead. Fucking assholes. I'm trying to clutter my roof. Regardless of this, we are continuing on. And we seem to be going alright. There's a fly in my fucking room. Get out of the way, fly. There we go. And so we've arrived. And no, I haven't forgot about the combat educator, the word that does not get me off. We will be continuing on. Ba -ba 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 -bam, ba -ba 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 -bam. Thankfully, this one is actually not that bad because I've got some practice with Agni and Rudra. And we don't have to worry about our health too much because there's a health item nearby that we can use just to, uh, you know, re re top ourselves up before we move on. So easy enough, as long as we don't spend too long on this, it won't really face any much danger. I'm not sure if you get any... Um, Ah, oh, shit, what's the phrase I'm looking for? I'm not sure if you get any additional um, stylish points for being in Devil Trigger, but... Well, hey, that might have been an advantage, I'm not sure. You might have noticed by now that in Devil Trigger, Dante actually does not have the ability to speak. If you press the Torn button, he doesn't say anything, because apparently these... Well, especially, even if you're a demon, but previously a human that knows English, or Japanese, but depending on which version you're playing, you just can't speak English anymore for some reason. It's like you've become another meta well, metamorphosized version of yourself, like you're not really yourself. Your brain becomes that of another. Quite an interesting thing, if you think about it. Well, not entirely interesting, but it's something worth food for thought. And so you might have noticed I'm also practicing my um, my sword master technique of just kicking people and throwing the sword. I don't know why, but it's so entertaining. Especially against Lust, because they take a lunge back and they're like, Oh, I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna get you. And then when they go, they meet halfway to a sword in the face. That can't really be pleasant, you can imagine. I mean, you, you run, or you're basically rushing a 100 meter dash. You're about to get the Olympic gold, and suddenly a sword goes halfway down your esophagus. Ow. 
that really would fucking hurt. And I just feel the impact of that just so much better when I'm imagining an Olympian that's on fire getting a sword in the face. I love that move. He's like, oh, no, you missed me. Oh, no, you didn't. And so we make a return for the blood goils. Absolutely stunning. Absolutely beautiful. Well, I wouldn't say they're beautiful. They're actually my most hated... One of my most hated monsters, I'd say. This whole petrification thing is bullshit. No, I didn't actually even really have to kill them. I just did it. Doors unlocked. It's like fighting through a warehouse of terrorists only to find that the door that they were protecting was actually wide open with a sign saying, please come in. Take that, Navy SEALs. Imagine if the Navy SEALs actually found that one day. They just turned around and was like, these terrorists are protecting armed nukes out in the open in the middle of New York City with no cover and are practically asking them, uh, asking the Navy SEALs to come and whoop their asses. Or the British SAS, I don't know. Take a pick. Insert special forces name here. Russian Spetsnaz. Or maybe even the KGB. Whatever you, you know, whatever takes your fancy in, your, in the world of military science. Military science? It's not really a science. I guess it is, sort of. Would it be counted as a military science? I have no fucking clue. How bizarre. And no, I do not play guitar solo for this boss this time. Just because of the simple fact that it's, um... You know, we can't play as guitar solo for every Grim Reaper we slay, you know. I mean, they might be the Lord of Death and Metal, but seriously... We're gonna run out of Metal Bands by the time we're killing enough of these. And down it goes, easy enough. BAM! Fucking football, man. Let me tell you all about football. You kick it with your foot. And there's a ball involved. Involved? Involved. And then you kick it into this net with a man guarding it. And now you know. Hey, what's this? And so we are fighting the Jester. Again. Why are we fighting the Jester again? I have no idea. I don't know why he initiates combat with us. There's absolutely no purpose to it, but I do it just for the sake of completion. I never leave a money mini boss unfinished. Is he really a mini boss or is he just a distraction? Is he a red herring? Or is he more than meets the eye? Or is he just a complete retard? I suppose you'll have to find that out on the next episode. Other than that, really, there's nothing new to mention at the start. He plays exactly the same as the last time we fought him. So I'm going to answer some questions until he gets to the new battle tactics. Han Yukami asks, How did you get into Blue DMC, Blue Badger? I'm the master of the fucking universe, baby. Let me tell you, I can do whatever the fuck I like. Because I'm a Blue Badger. Dark Samus 5 asked in a previous episode, are you going to play as Virgil at the end of this LP? I am planning on it in a bonus episode right at the end that we will be playing at least a little bit on Virgil, getting an idea for his style and play way. But other than that, I have... Well, it's not going to be a critical part of the LP, but I will probably do an LP on playing Virgil, as I have never actually done it before, funnily enough. So we will see when the time comes at the end of this LP. Really, I mean... I wonder what happens if when you play Virgil in the missions, actually. Do you play Dante? Well, do you fight against Dante, or do you fight Virgil versus Virgil? Time paradox, motherfucker. Jesus. Blowing my brain all over this joint. Yeah. 
And so we have the moon from Zelda the Twilight, not Twilight Princess, Zelda Mandura's mask. And he likes to spit explosives at us. I really fucking hate this portion of the fight because you've got attacks on the low road, attacks on the fucking high road. There's just no escape from it. You can't do anything about it. Absolutely frustrating, but instead, it's pretty much the same thing, actually. Just shoot at him until he's exhausted on top of the ball, go double trigger and just spam aerial rave. As you can see, his health's dropping like a motherfucker, easy enough. Ow, ow, ow. Well, Moon crushed the world. Fucking failed Zelda. Really, I, I don't have anything to say about this boss battle other than it's fucking annoying. I love Jester as a character, but his boss battle is taking the piss. Fucking hate it. Ow. And with that, Jester is defeated easily enough, because really... Fuck him, man. I'm tired of this bullshit. And if you might, you might not have been able to hear it during the fight, but Jester actually spams the words, Jester's gonna spank your butt, spank you on the butt. If you're into the clown fetish, that's perfectly fine. But badgers, mortal enemies, are clowns that are about to spank you on the butt. Ugh. Let me tell you about this one time when I was in Nam. A clown tried... Actually, no, this isn't the time or place for it. No. Instead, we'll use this large vital star and progress onwards. Further and further we go, boldly into the depths of hell. To find what? More gothic architecture? Big fucking whoop. Chicken race with a horse, huh? Fair enough. Yes, a chicken race with a horse. Oh, the irony, Dan. Say, ow! Okay, let's do not do that again. But easily enough, it's pretty much the same thing. It's not exactly a hard initial battle. You just basically jump over him, throw your sword at him, shoot him a few times. So let me tell you, have I ever mentioned how much I really don't like horses? Sure, the cities were built on the backs of horses and whatnot, but I, uh, I implore you to Google the oatmeal, why we should be eating horses instead of riding them, for some very good and useful factual information of how horses actually are. They are giant sacks of shit that do nothing but poop and eat hay all day. You will see why once you read this article. First chicken, now gladiator. This just keeps getting better and better. Too bad there's nobody here to enjoy the show! So you might have imagined by now that this horse, well, this horse has the ability to stop time. Yes, the ability to stop time. Amazing. But... I guess we'll see more of that and why it's actually quite a frustrating uh, ordeal in the future because we haven't really gotten a good view of it right now. But at this time, this horse, you cannot take it... Well, you can take it quickly, but without, but only with taking massive risks. There are missiles barraging you constantly. Ballistic missiles fucking you up. And just, really, you don't have the time to attack between them. So what you need to do is, when he stops to take a breather, you need to slash at his back legs and knock him over and just spam that attack. Bitch him up. 
and then he freezes time and comes to trample you. But it's easy enough to, uh, to dodge. Biting my tongue here is not a very effective means of commentary. Let this be a lesson to us. The horse's name is, I believe, pronounced Geryon or Geryon. It is spelled G-E-R-Y-O-N. And I'm really bad at pronouncing all these demonic names and all their blue flame bullshittiness. I have no interest in learning the gram grammatical correctness or grammatical correctness of the demon world because I'm pretty sure they've underfunded their education fund for their un... Well, they've under... I completely, I completely managed to fart that joke out, didn't I? Small farts all around, baby, because I am... Who's harder tonight? Your ballistic missiles are no match for my puny 45 rounds. And whether or not you can actually knock the missiles out of the air, you actually probably can, but it's just not worth it. I could probably... You know, I'm sure you're thinking, why didn't he go Royal Guard for this match? Well, the thing is, is that I don't really want to be able to block an entire fucking horse. There's something a little wrong with that, with the idea of being able to block a 200 pound beast of steel and flesh. That's including the carriage. Probably 300 pound, no less. No idea how much it would weigh. But seriously, have you ever tried blocking a horse that's tra charging towards you? You just don't do it. Nor do you try to hand block ballistic missiles. Which I'm pretty sure I could probably do it. I just don't want to. So you might have imagined those red orcs on the ground are actually very unfriendly. They actually freeze time for Geryon, or Greyon, or Greymon. Fuck Digimon. But it's not entirely a hard battle, as long as you take your time liberally and just uh, try not to rush the battle, you'll be fine really. Just dodge, fight, dodge, fight, dodge, fight. There's nothing special to him. He gives you your chance to attack back, to fight back, and just use it wisely. And sometimes, like, the Quicksilver... Well, the Quicksilver... Yes, I'm going to call it Quicksilver Balls. The Balls of Quicksilver are basically not enough to stop us from dodging the fucking missiles. I mean, how slow do you have to be to dodge a missile? So Dante gains the power of anthropomorphic animals. Yes, Dante is now a furry. He has gained the power to be a horse. Well, better go write some fanfics now. Oh, and he can do that too. Yes, we have gained a new style, a special power of that Geryon used to control time. This style gives you more freedom and battle to try out different tactics and combos. Yes, in the exchange for Devil Trigger, we can now fucking stop time. That's just how ridiculous this game can fucking be. A new style, not a new weapon, you say? I'm not complaining.
That asshole stole our weapon. We defeated that motherfucker fair and square and he just took the weapon like that. You bastard. For Water Brothers 4, am I right? Always taking the best stuff. And I will see you next time on the next episode of Devil May Cry 3.